Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I have a pattern that Daniela Stout from Cozy Quilt Design sent to me. She thought I might like to make this, and I would love to make it. It's called Bellagio, and it, it takes two and a half inch strips, my favorite pre-cut. And I thought I would do something colorful like this one here. You can really see it from the side. So we've got all these colors to choose from, and now we need to get a background and an accent. I'm sure that I want to use black for the, ac for the accent. That's going to be around here. And that will make a nice break between the colorful strips and the background. Now for the background, we're going to have to check. I don't know if I'm going to use cream. I might use white. I think either of them would work because there are a lot of natural colors in here. So here's a nice cream color. Let's see if these look happy on there. They actually do look really good. And I think this will look better than a white. So let's go with this cream. This pattern takes different number of strips depending of course on the size you're going to make. I would like to make the twin size which is going to take 19 strips. Now you can go all the way up to a king which takes 40 and that's the whole roll. Now I'm going to use 19 in the patchwork and then I'm going to have a bunch left over for a nice colorful binding. Now let's pick out the strips that we want to use for the patchwork. So I want to get a lot of different colors and I'm probably not going to use duplicates. There might be a couple of duplicates in here. And I'm probably not gonna use these really, really light ones because the real light ones don't have quite enough contrast. I mean, we could, but I think I'm gonna use the brighter ones. I have the 19 that I wanna use. And the first step is to split all of these along the fold. So I'm just gonna put the scissors in there, cut each one in half. Now we're gonna make three different kind of blocks and we need some of these strips for the different blocks. So I'm just gonna make a couple different stacks. I'm gonna put some up here and some down here, and then we can have them ready to make the different blocks we need. Now, two of the blocks don't get subcut. We just need long strips for those. But for this block, we're gonna take these and we are going to make a couple of subcuts. So I'm gonna stack them up a little and cut them down. Now, there's just a few subcuts. I can't give you the exact sizes because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt Designs patterns, they're very easy to follow and they've got all the information you need in there. Now we are going to need some background and accent fabrics because we're going to need these cut up so we can mix them with these pieces. I've gathered all the pieces we need for the first block. It's a very easy block. We just need one background piece and then two small colored pieces and two big colored pieces, all the same color. So I'm gonna just sew these onto here first. I'm gonna line everything up and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam here. And all the seam allowances are going to go toward the dark. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'm just gonna finger press. So I'm just using my fingernail and pressing that seam towards the dark. And this seam allowance also goes towards the dark side. Now we're gonna add this piece and it's exactly the length we need. And I like to sew with this on the top because then I can make sure my seam allowances are facing the way I want them to stay. So in this case, away from the center. We've got both the long pieces on, and that's our first block. Once you have all of block number one done, we're ready to start on block number two. Now for block number two, we need to make some strip units, and we need to make two different kind of strip units. So the first one is going to have two colorful strips with a background strip in the middle. Forgot to split it. If you forgot to split your strips, cut them in half right now. Now the second strip unit, it's going to have two of these backgrounds, split another one, two backgrounds with a colorful one in the middle. So we'll take these over and get them stitched up. To make the strip unit, we're going to sew along the long edge here. You have to kind of ignore the uh, pinked edges here, just they're going to stick out a little bit wider than your non-pinked strip that you cut, but just ignore all that. and. Sew a quarter inch from your straight cut here. 
So I'm not going to stretch anything. I'm just going to carefully sew all the way down and don't stretch either of the strips. Now we're going to want to finger press this and the pattern calls for us to finger press it toward the light color. My light color is thick enough that the seam allowance, even those pink things aren't going to show through. And now we're going to add this strip here. We're going to stitch it on and we're going to finger press again toward the light color. So again, we're going to finger press toward the light fabric. So by finger press, what I'm going to do is hold these open and I'm going to draw my fingernail or my fingertip right down that seam. So I'm opening it with the palms of my thumbs here and pulling down there. And this is really critical because it makes it very easy to iron this when you get to the ironing board. If you don't do that step, it's really hard to get it flat and straight. Once you get those done, you are going to want to press this nice and flat. Even though we finger press it, we still need to use our iron. So I like to smooth it out with my hands. And then I like to have a straight edge here, like a long yardstick, and then I can tell it's straight. So I'm gonna use a dry iron first, and then I'm going to steam it also. Now we need to subcut the strip units. And both of them get subcut exactly the same. So you can put them on your cutting board and do them at the same time. Once you have all your strip units cut up, we're ready to make block number two. We're gonna take two of these that have the colors on the outside and one of these with the color in the middle and sew them together and pick them at random so you have five different colors in each block. Now when we lay these together, the seam allowances are going in opposite directions there. And that's going to make it real easy to match them. And it's going to make it really flat after we stitch this seam here. And now we'll do the same thing with this one here. Now these seam allowances are going to be pressed towards the middle of the block. And you'll notice that this block, most of the seam allowances, they're pressed towards the light side. We'd always use the rule, press your seams towards the dark side when we can. But if a pattern tells you to press it in a different direction, there's a reason. And usually it's because the whole quilt will lay a lot flatter if they're laying a certain way. So always follow the pattern directions. Block number two is done. Now we're going to work on block number three. So we're going to make some strip units with these guys. We're going to open this up and press the seam towards the dark side. Now we're going to make some subcuts. So here's all of these pieces, and we're going to take these that we had left over from earlier and head back to the sewing machine. Now all we have to do is sew one of these strip units on each side of this guy. These seam allowances go away from the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of block three stitched up. I have all of the blocks done and we're ready to lay out the quilt. This is my favorite part. So we've got three different blocks here. And we're going to start with these guys. So on the bottom of the quilt, they're just going to be laying in alternate directions here. So we've got the lines that way, the lines this way. The next row, it's going to get one of these blocks and then one of these checkerboard blocks, and it's gonna alternate all the way along the row. The third row is again going to be these guys, and they're going to be, so it's not gonna be the same direction, it's gonna be the opposite direction as that one there. So again, keep trading the way they go. When I'm all done, I will move the colors around, but I like to place them in their positions first. So I've got most of the quilt laid out here, and now we're starting to see the pattern show. So I might trade some things around. Um, it looks actually pretty balanced, but sometimes I might not want the green next to the green, so I can just twist that guy. Or if I had too much bright pink right here, you could always trade this with 
another block here. Just be sure when you trade around that when you put it back, you make sure you've got it turned the way it goes. The last thing we need is some side setting triangles and some corner triangles. So these are going to fill in along the edges so that our quilt will have a nice straight edge. Then we've got some little triangles and they're going to go in the four corners. Now this quilt is what we call on point. And that means we've got the points. It's not straight. Everything is, is diamond shaped. So to make this, you have to think of your rows like this. That's row number one. That is row number two. These ones here, that's row number three. So the easiest way to do this is to sew the row together and put it right back on the table. Then sew another row, put it right back on the table. Once you have all your rows made, then start sewing together this way. I have the quilt on the machine and I'm really happy with all the colors that are in it. Now we have many options for thread for the quilting. I do like to keep it lighter. So I'm thinking either this one, that one, or that one. And I think this, this is a really light aqua blue. It matches the borders. It's not going to show too much here. So even though there's not a wrong choice, there's just one that I like the best, I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to use a quilting pattern called Spirals Galore. I like this because it has big swirls and little swirls. And since I'm using that light aqua thread and my backing is black grunge, this is going to show really well on the back side of the quilt. The Bellagio quilt is all done. I love how the quilting has big and little swirls. You can even see it from far away. And you know, we made three different patchwork blocks. I can't even hardly tell which is which. In fact, one of them looks like a rectangle. This here, it looks like a rectangle to me, but it's actually square. So we've got those three different blocks all mixed in. Now I used for the setting triangles, the same color as I used in my background. The pattern uses a different color here. So you have choices there, you always have choices, but look at how the thread color just recedes into the quilt. It's light aqua, but you can't see it on the light. You can hardly see it on the dark. Now, the one place you can see the thread is on the backside because I used a really nice black grunge. And so the quilting pattern really shows up well on there. We hope you enjoyed watching our tutorial on how to make the Bellagio quilt. I had a lot of fun making it. Now we're gonna have a giveaway. We have three runners here. They are all batik. This is Robert Kaufman, nice blues and browns. Another Robert Kaufman combination. Green, yellow, very springy. And then of course my favorite purples and greens. These are all from Anthology Batiks. So it's very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click that link that says giveaway, enter your name and your email address, and you might be the lucky winner of one of these three runners. Now, if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting!